sometimes she'd get a little careless. I, she had a, a short and some wiring on the floor. We had a, some water come under the door, and to put the fire out, she threw water on it, and that didn't work too well. <clears throat> but she was a, a, a neat, a very neat person, and a very loving person. She wanted to have a baby. Yes, she, uh, she asked me for a baby when I was going in the service. She said, uh, I, w I, I want a baby, I want a piece of you. I have a letter. Is it all right if I read it? I would always ask. Go ahead. We already have one mascara running, so <laughs> let's see if I can do this. He's not wearing any. <laughs> he can cry. <laughs> this is a letter from Marilyn to her foster mother about her marriage to Jim, dated uh, June 15th, 1944. Dearest Grace, I've never really written and told you of Jimmy and my married life together. Of course, I know that if it hadn't been for you, we might not have been married, and I know I owe you a lot for that fact alone. I love Jimmy just more than anyone, and I know I shall never be happy with anyone else as long as I live, and I know he feels the same towards me. So you see, we're really very happy together. That is, when we can be together. We both miss each other terribly. We will be married two years, June 19th, and we really have had quite a happy life together. When the time came to get divorced, how did, it was her decision, how did she explain this to you? What, what could she say that would make sense? Well, really to her, it wasn't like we were separating or anything, we just weren't gonna be married anymore because we were gonna live together anyhow. But why would she not, why would she want a divorce if you're going to live together anyhow? Well, she had to have, had to be single to get a contract with whoever was offering a contract at the studio. And uh, she, uh, she wanted this contract. What do you make out of what happened from that time on in your own mind? I think she went through uh, something that she wasn't equipped to go through. She was a very kind, gentle person. And this is the toughest business in the world, being in the acting business. And you hear so many um, people that, uh, that have uh, uh, tabloid minds, so to speak, saying things about her as to how she died. And I call it a tabloid mentality. And uh, they never knew her. They knew nothing about her. Some of them have written books. Thank goodness Susan knew her in which she wrote her book. Yeah. But uh, I, I get so upset with some of these things that are, are said about her because she was a good person. Yeah. What happened in the end, do you think, Jim? To her? Mm-hmm. Couldn't cope? No. This, this goes on. You know, I was a policeman for 25 years in Los Angeles, and I got to answer a lot of calls around the Universal Studios where things would occur where people have to get some sleep. So they take a sleeping pill. They gotta be up to go to work. So they take an upper. Then they take two downers, and then they take three uppers. Pretty soon they lose count of the downers. I walked into this house one day and I heard this lady saying to her son, bring me another pill, I gotta get some sleep. And the little kid was sharp, he was emptying them and hmm. giving her the empty capsules. But I came back the next day to talk to her to see if she was trying to commit suicide. She says, no. I just wanted to get some sleep because I had to work the next day and I was so tired. But yeah. Sally, you, you know, when, when Jim said something about, well, you know, the business, and it's true that it's the hardest business in the world, but I feel Marilyn felt, at least when I knew her, that she had something, she wanted to do something for the world. Mm -hmm. She felt she wanted that, that the reason God had put her here was that she was meant to give something, to, to share something with, with a lot of people. And I think that if she hadn't gone into the business, her life might have been worse. Because if you look at Clara Bow, when Clara Bow quit the business, she wound up with two beautiful children, a lovely husband, and totally schizophrenic with a nurse <laughs> for the rest of her life. No, when, because for Marilyn, it was a chance to express all that hidden stuff that when she was growing up, she had to hide. Her, you know, the sorrow, the passion, the, the freedom, you know, her, her sexuality. Her, she was different. She wasn't normal. She once said to me, they keep trying to put me in this box called Normal Susan, and you open the box and nobody lives in there anyway. Why are they doing that to me? She said, and they expect me to be the anything goes girl, you know, the happy-go-lucky girl. And I just, I need to find out who I am so that I think that although the business is a killer 
and it's a hard business, I somehow think, though, that it also gave Marilyn something that she wanted desperately. I can tell she that Jane wants it. to say something. When we come she back, she wanted it she desperately. She wanted it desperately. Yeah. You have to. When we come back, we'll talk about the mysteries surrounding her. Maybe talk about her death. Our guests today have different opinions of what really happened. I'll ask you. Take a break. Marilyn had sung Happy Birthday to the President and was working on a film she never finished called Something's Gotta Give. On August the 5th, she was found dead in her home from an apparent overdose of barbiturates. Tragic end to an already semi-tragic life. There have been a lot of theories about what really happened the night Marilyn died. Jane, I said we'd get back to you. Do you hold with conspiracies? John, do you hold with conspiracies? Well, I have no idea. Business? No. Not at all. Was it possible? Any, anything anything is, possible. is possible, but you know what? <laughs> but not factual. Nobody no. was under her bed that night, and nobody really knows. And the thing that, that bothers me is that people who didn't know, who come out and look for a fast way to exploit... Marilyn was exploited when she was alive, and she's exploited uh, since she's been dead. So people That's suddenly true. come out, <laughs> they don't know, they make up stories that nobody is alive to say, no, it's not true. So uh, she, it's funny, she, it's uh, also, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to, uh, to try to, if you talk about politics and say it's a political thing, then you don't have to think about how she felt. And I think that's what makes it's easier for people to deal with it, because then they don't have to say, well, why would somebody who made us all so and happy, was rich and why famous and somebody beautiful? who has everything, someone who seems to have love, she's had men that a lot of women would say, but those are wonderful men. Why is that person who, not happy? You know? Besides Jim, present company, who did she really love? Well, I'll take a break and I'll let you think about it. I'll give you a moment. Yeah. We'll be right back. to say something about uh, Waif, if that's all right with you, before I get to the men in uh, her life. Jane, your career goes on and on, and I know one of the things that you're passionate about is the nonprofit organization you founded that places orphan children with adoptive families. How's it going? We love you. We love Waif. We think you're doing wonderful things. We're almost up to 40,000 children, all but it could right. be three times more. Love. I I think in a way Marilyn's whole life was a love story. I know that the marriages ended and the affairs wound up disastrous, but I think it was a love story of a woman who had this capacity to love everybody except herself. And in the end, if you don't love yourself, none of the rest helps. I feel like you do. I love Marilyn Monroe, and I really think she was exploited and she was used. But I, we don't see, we only know what we read in the paper. Do you feel that she was used by the Kennedys at all? How do you feel about the Kennedys and Marilyn Monroe? I can only speak from what I knew, and I was not privy to a lot of those things. Um, we had just been talking about it in the break, and we said, listen, if she was used by the Kennedys, politicians use people. That's a major thing that they do. They use and discard people, and it's the nature of reality of politicians all over the world, not just in this country. So, uh, yes, she was used by her studio, who wanted to keep her a dumb blonde because she was making money for them, and maybe she was used by a lot of the men. But, you know, in the end, Marilyn really fought to take responsibility for her own life. So in that sense, she wasn't a victim. She was very strong on a certain maybe level. Maybe a player. Take a break. We'll be right back. Got 
trying what's to tell it, me. What's it all about, Alfie? Having done all this study and learned all of that, what, what do you think? What do you feel? About what? Did it, about anything concerned with it. Did it change your view of show business? Did, it, did yes. it contribute to your understanding of your father, your brother, your mother? Where? At the time, it didn't. But in writing yes. Marilyn and me, it totally, it was like opening doors <coughs> because I also saw when, in the beginning with Marilyn, because she seemed so glamorous and different and older and more sophisticated, I thought we were worlds apart. I realized how much alike she and I were. And not only mm -hmm. that, that in spite of the fact that she had that glamorous outer image, that inside she was just like me. She had the same insecurities, the same fears, the same longings, the same dreams. Mm -hmm. And that, in a way, she talked about things and show, I feel that even in the things that maybe you would look at as negative about her life, even in the pitfalls that she fell into, in she a way... She was a bit of every one of us? Yes, and in a way she taught us a lesson at her own expense, because I believe that millions of people still learn what was the from both her mistakes and from her triumphs. I think the lesson is to follow your dreams no matter what, and to be yourself with everyone under all circumstances, and I also think the lesson is that you have to take responsibility for your own life. Take a break. Call 1-800-FOR-SALLY. 1-800-FOR-SALLY for video cassettes only. For a transcript, send $3 to 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Or call 303-831-9000. I want to thank all of my guests today. Susan Strasberg's book is called Marilyn and Me, Sisters, Rivals, and Friends. And by the way, it's really good. Jane and I loved it. Jane Russell is in the fashion business now. She has a new line of sweaters for the full-figured woman about to hit the department stores nationwide. And a very special thanks to our collectors who've given us uh, all of this ephemera and the fans and the impersonators in our audience today who provided many of the photos and the posters used in today's show. It strikes me that something that was different about Marilyn Monroe is that women really loved her. Thank you for sharing this with us. Some members of our audience will receive and a promotional fee has been provided by... Paul Mitchell Salon Hair Care. We're as good to the environment as we are. <laughs>